you were you were speaking of the synthetics. I remember in the days when we were running eight inch rabbit strip flies, and it's like casting a wet sock when that rabbit leather gets wet. It's just it's just horrible. Uh, the advantages of a fly angler on musky lakes is that our entrance and exit from the water with a fly tends to be a little more silent. Yet you run bucktails, and I'm assuming you run spinners on on those. It, it, Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That, see that sonic footprint. That's that's what gets me crazy as a fly angler. That's something I can't replicate. You know, I've tried. We've all tried, and it just really, uh, you know, about eight years ago, I tried for an entire summer to get because the summer runs are very similar. Summer runs steelhead are very similar to muskies in in the way they react. You know, nine times out of ten, it's a reaction. It's not a hey, I think I'm going to go eat that. You know, it's more of I'm going to kill that. I, I really don't want to eat it. So um, I started just one summer. I started in, and I realized I was like, what am I doing here? I grabbed a, a seven-foot, seven-and-a-half-foot spinning rod, rolled my own spinners, and proceeded to enjoy fishing, you know, instead of being frustrated. So there's sometimes there's limitations. But, again, back to the fly fishing for muskies. They don't see a lot of flies. Presentation is absolutely amazing. Um, a book, you know, I know I think Robert Tomes has been on your, on the show um, his book really has revolutionized, uh, you know, the concept of fly fishing for muskies and um, musky on the fly. And I, I, you know, after reading it the second time, I realized just the little things I wasn't doing to improve the odds. And, and, and really that can be said about muskies across the board, you know, sun angle, the way the weeds are, uh, the grain of the weeds, all those little things make a huge difference. They really do. Robert is an interesting man with a fascinating book, and that boy is no stranger to big flies. He's got actual size photos of the flies in his book, and it's it's amazing. I I had an angler come in one time asking me to tie a shark fly for him, and he had two six-aught stainless hooks that were snelled together with uh, piano wire, and he gave me the recipe. uh, The name of that fly was called Half a Chicken because pretty much that was strapped on there, and that's what Robert throws, but... But then again, Robert, Robert can cast. Um, uh, yeah, yeah that's a <laughs> <laughs> which is an advantage when you're casting big flies. You provide some some on boat instruction to tune up anglers getting ready to cast. That's got to be a challenge for you as a guide, isn't it? Well, I, if they have a primer, you know, such as uh, if they've been with Joseph Meyer um, or another caster instru- casting instructor, and, and spend a day, you know. You know, whether it's on a lawn or in a stream, it helps immensely. <clears throat> I don't have that. More often than not, I have a guy walk up uh, and say he's fished a few times, and this is his buddy, Jed, who's never even seen a fly rod in his life, even on a you know a commercial on TV. And um, you, by necessity, you really do have to become an on-the-water instructor. And it is frustrating sometimes because people expect to catch fish. And, um, you know, there are ways for a guy to go out and catch a steelhead or a muskie and not have any background of fishing at all. Unfortunately, picking up a fly rod and casting to a spooky steelhead or trout um, and or muskies, it just is very difficult. Now, largemouth bass, um, you know, I love the green bass because they're kind of stupid. <laughs> you can <laughs> you can manage to kind of push them around a little bit and get away with murder when it comes to, you know, sloppy casting. But that said, yeah, you, you really do need to, I just wish guys would practice a little more often because once they catch, you know, you know as well as I do, once they feel it and they start to actually be able to concentrate on the, on the, on the presentation, that's really when they make that big jump into the next level. And, they become and a, it allows them, yeah. They become a better angler. I work with, uh, I work with students and their casting ability, and, and I remind them that Phil Mickelson made $230 million this year on the PGA Tour, and... And Phil practices, you know, they, every day. and it, it's just amazing when you can fall in love with the fly rod and when it bends and unbends, you can stop thinking about your casting and start thinking about your fishing and you become a better angler. Hey, when I'm on your website, uh, anglinoutdoors.com, I take a look at, and by the way, if you listeners haven't written that down, there is a link on my homepage at onemorecast.com to Jay Anglin's website. Uh, when I look on there, I see you do some some goose hunting and some uh, traipsing around in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, you know, I've been an avid hunter for almost as long as I've been a fly fisherman, uh, you know, fisherman. And um, 
I'm really a waterfowl bum, waterfowl junkie, however you want to look at it. So I hunt geese and ducks. Um, I started to guide uh, upland game at reserves in the area about 10 years ago. Uh, went through a couple of dogs that I, I miss every day. As a matter of fact, I'm looking out in the other room and I can see their the urns. But um, uh, I've got one sitting here about five feet away taking a nap. And, uh, you know, that's half the battle right there. Take the dog away and I probably wouldn't love it as much. But, uh, you know, the turkey thing, when I left Indiana to go to the Upper Peninsula to go to school, there was about nine turkeys here. Um, now they're everywhere. And I really, really enjoyed guiding turkeys the past few years this last year very successful i enjoyed it Uh, it's a lot of fun and when i lived in the upper peninsula i tried to guide up there a little bit and uh it's a little different up there you know you get a watch out you'll get your tires slid your car burned uh they don't want people showing their secret spots to anybody so but that's changed there's some really uh you know, excellent guides up there now that are doing a good job. So it's sort of changed that, that mentality sort of gone away. They realize it's a great way to get some tourism. Um, So where do you, where do you guide clients for turkeys, Jay? uh, Around, I I generally guide this year. I guided in Michigan and Indiana, Uh, Michigan. I wasn't very successful. A lot of my spots were overrun with, um, dare I say idiots, but Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get a lot of guys that just decide they're going to go turkey hunting. They think they're hunting squirrels, but, uh, um, I was uh, very successful in Indiana this year. I also hunted in Wisconsin. I was very successful up there. And um, Wisconsin's probably the best turkey state in the Union right now, and I didn't see anything in Wisconsin um, that I hadn't seen here in Indiana. It's a real sleeper. Uh, licenses are available over the counter. They're not cheap for non-residents, but it's very good hunting. Uh, but it's very fragmented. It's private. There's very little state land, so for a guy from another state to come here and beat on doors it's possible but you're probably going to you know save yourself a lot of time and headache and energy by hiring a guide and there aren't very many of them over here so uh, so you're, I, you're I, the, I was you're the guide to go yeah. see which is pretty cool and uh for the listeners and and jay knows this i'm pretty much the laughing stock of my clients who hunt because i i fly fish that's that's all i do i'm just not that bright and I can handle a fly rod, and that's about it. So I'm on Cranberry Lake in the front of Jay's boat, uh, concentrating on some of these big, stupid largemouth. And Jay is in the back of the boat with a mouth call for turkeys. Um, not something I expected to hear. And then I hear a chorus of turkeys calling back at Jay. It's like he has these birds named. Now, I, I, I know darn well that these turkeys have a calendar, and they know that it's not the season, so they're more than willing to talk to you. A little different when the uh, when the season rolls around. So you guide for largemouth, you guide for smallmouth, tributaries in uh, of of the St. Joe and its environs. You guide for steelhead. Um, you do some trout fishing. I know you on your website anglingoutdoors.com. You've got a picture of a pet trout called Pug, which is pretty amazing. And I think my listeners really should go to anglinoutdoors.com and take a look at that fish. Catch and release really works. You guide for turkeys. Really does, yeah. You yep. do some hunting in the UP. Any deer hunting opportunities, Jay? Yeah, you know, this year I, I am going to go ahead and probably take some people deer hunting. Uh, the, the opportunities over here, again, are, are, I mean, almost astounding sometimes when I realize that every time I go out I could probably harvest several deer if I desire to do so. Um, I'm not talking about giant bucks, but if a guy wants to come out, try it and take a crack at, you know, an antlerless, a, a doe, um, just to, you know, see if, I mean, there's a lot of people that think, you know, I wouldn't mind trying that, but when it comes down to it, essentially you are, I mean, you're killing a large mammal and a lot of people have a problem with that. And I don't have a problem with someone feeling that way. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that it, it's sort of, it's like one of those things that interests them a little bit, but they're not sure if they'd like it well that's okay. And then of course there's other people that are insatiable with it. And I try to tone that down too. I you know, look, you need to sit back and enjoy the, the view a little bit. Um, and, and we need so to I'll do, do that, that a lot, now. a lot with our students just to remind them. And I'm, I'm blessed to be, uh, surrounded by people who keep me grounded and remind me, Hey, we got in this to have fun. Uh, that let, let's not get all anxious about this. We're talking with Jay Anglin of Anglin Outdoors. Jay has a little slice of heaven uh, from my shop, one more cast in in uh, 
in countryside. Jay is less than two hours away with all of these spectacular opportunities for largemouth, smallmouth, steelhead, musky fishing, goose hunting, turkey hunting, deer hunting. And if you really want to have an enjoyable day in the outdoors, get a hold of Jay. Well, Heather, are we about near? Jay, thank you very much for uh, for joining us, and uh, we'll be giving you a call. For my listeners, at onemorecast.com, you'll find a link on my homepage to anglinoutdoors.com. Jay, you have a great day, and I appreciate you being here with us. Thanks a lot, Joseph. It's been great being on. Lovely. Well, Heather, we brought the show back into the station without losing the license. And uh, again, Bob Machulis will be back next week. He's just out fishing today. He's, he's well, um, sends his love. And uh, speaking of that, on my way home, I'm going to give thanks to those that I love and those that love me, and I hope that you get a chance to do the same. Heather, again, thank you very much for uh, flying this radio station and making me look like a hero.